Yeah, I've always actually tied music and art together. It's, um, uh, in fact, when I work, I always have to listen to music. So uh, when I'm at my best, I'm not really thinking about the art. I'm usually thinking in terms of music, uh, and the art just expresses the feelings that I have when I'm listening to it. Uh, so for me, they kind of always went hand in hand. So when, when Jonathan a long while ago asked me to, to perform artwork um, on stage with him, uh, it was a real uh, dream come true for me because um, I thought seeing a live synthesis of the art and the music was just was something that I, I wanted to be a part of. Uh, and now I get to do uh, his album cover, which is neat. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I, I think they go hand in hand. What was going through my mind when I was painting at the Royal Room uh, was uh, keeping up with the pace of the music. I, that's something that I hadn't done before. I always listen to music when I when I make my work, so it was that that part comes naturally, uh, just painting as if it were music. I'd never really done it live, so it was neat to have to try to keep up with them. So I had to speed paint quite a bit, uh, which is to just paint really quickly, intuitively. Uh, not really plan anything. I didn't plan anything actually. I just went and and just made something, <laughs> which in and of itself is a lot of fun. Um, I grew up in LA, and I used to go watch live performances by a lot of great musicians like John Bryan. I would go see him at the Largo um, weekly almost, um, and I always thought that was um, it was one of the few times I got to see pure art. Uh, and, and to be able to do something like that was, was really cool, so. All of my work has some element of adventure to it. I, I'm always uh, being inspired. I'm always thinking back to when I was a kid and I was pretending to be on an adventure with my, my little brother. Uh, we had all these little dolls that we, we looked at as our crew and we would just get on this airship, which was just a piece of wood, <laughs> just a plank, and it was our favorite toy, this plank. Um, and we would just pretend that we were off on these adventures that were inspired by things like Final Fantasy, um, a lot of the video games that we were playing at the time. And um, I think Jonathan grew up in very much in the same kind of uh, environment. I feel like if we were neighbors, we would have been very close friends as kids. <laughs> we would always be. Uh, play acting fantasy stuff. So um, this has been really natural for me because I think we're both on the same wavelength in terms of that kind of um, the flights of fantasy and uh, just this idea of adventuring into into the unknown um, with a you know just a, a fear a feeling of excitement. A long time ago when I was Creating Amulet, the first Amulet book that I did um, of a series of nine. I'm on the eighth and ninth books right now. Um, when I started, I didn't know what I was doing. And one thing that I knew was going to be a problem was the fact that there was so much information I had to produce in one sitting. I had to create a full 200 page book at once. And I'd never done that before. And historically, comic artists hadn't done that before. They, they normally serialized the stories in short chunks in about 15 pages or so. Uh, in magazines or comic books that you would buy at the comic stores. Um, so one thing I ended up having to do was find a way to mentally self-serialize my book because I tried to draw the whole thing all at once and I couldn't. It just couldn't handle the whole thing. So what I did was I decided, well, I'm going to think about each book like it's an album and each sequence like it's a song. And so I actually draw my books out of order, very much the way that I think a musician would um, make their songs out of order. I don't think they make their songs based on a playlist. I think they make the playlist based on the songs. I do the same thing when I do um, an amulet book. There's about 14 songs in each of the, in each of the books. And um, most of the time, no one's going to be able to tell where one ends and one begins. Uh, but I always know. So. Uh, uh, I think I think very much in the way that a musician thinks about an album when constructing a graphic novel. Uh, 
Um, just like I, I said before, I just feel like Skyward Eye is flights of fantasy. I mean, I, um, it, it, it's very convenient for me to be able to be the one to paint this because I, I think um, Jonathan and I are thinking about so much of the same stuff and so that's why he came to me, I think, <laughs> about doing the painting. So he really just told me, before I even got to hear one song, he just said, just paint something. And, and the paintings you do when you do speed painting, that's exactly what I want. Um, and so it's not, it wasn't like a, doing a client job or anything. It was just an extension of what I already do um, that is connecting with what Jonathan does. So um, I think that uh, it, it, came, it came naturally. So for me, um, it is about just the idea of exploration um, and being on an expedition in a way. Um, and so when I, when I'm, the way I've been designing the cover and the, the CDs and the, and the, um, um, and the records, uh, the record labels that I decided um, that it was going to tell the story of a uh, this very small intrepid airship <laughs> and that the crew was going to be the band and um, everything about it kind of would remind people that uh, that you're on this little boat and you're floating through these fa fantasy settings and um, and I feel like it's just my my way of sending off the guys on their journey <laughs> uh, and, and, and kind of wrapping up the, the project in this um, this fantasy um, this fantasy wrapper <laughs> where they can go off and, and have fun so um, hopefully it, that kind of comes through when you see the, the artwork <laughs>